Welcome back to the News at 10. The Lagos State Government has arraigned the 48-year-old female lawyer Udeme Otike Odibi for the alleged murder of her 50-year-old husband, Simprosa Otike Odibi. She was arraigned today before Justice Adedayo Akintoe of the Lagos High Court sitting in the Igbushere area on charges bordering on murder and misconduct with regard to a corpse. The Lagos State Prosecutor, Mr. Babatunde Sumono, told Justice Akintoe that the defendant allegedly murdered her husband on May the 3rd, 2018, at their residence. He said the defendant allegedly threatened him with a knife and eventually stabbed him to death and went further to mutilate his body. According to him, the offence is contrary to Section 223 of the Criminal Law of Lagos State 2015 and punishable by death while the offence of misconduct with regard to a corpse is contrary to Section 165 of the Criminal Law of Lagos State 2015 and punishable with five years imprisonment. The defendant, however, pleaded not guilty to the charge, but Justice Akintoe ordered the further remand of the defendant in Krikri Prison and subsequently adjourned the case to October the 8th and 9th for hearing. And now to some company reports, food business group Flour Mills Nigeria is positioned to maintain its top spot in the industry, feeding the nation consistently through its array of products and customers. And at the latest edition of its customer forum and awards, the listed agro-allied giant rewarded clientele with cash gifts and 17 brand new trucks. Flour Mills has been doing business in Nigeria for about 60 years, leading the food and agro-allied industry, all made possible by its growing customers and distributors. We will be coming up with data that will be supportive to you and that will help you. Even your relationship with our company, there are so many times that you are finding out how much have I done? It is all already half of the month. How much have I done? Am I meeting up my target for the month? The forum moves into a dialogue session to examine some key areas of concern. In terms of the delivery of our products, again, I've had, we had quite a lot of feedback. And I don't think our downstream supply chain model, to give it a fancy name, in terms of our deliveries, is the best in class. If it's 50 trucks, if it is 100 trucks, we design the reward system to care for everyone. It would be wrong, we think, to reward someone doing 100 same way as someone doing five. Then the high point of the ceremony. About 100 outstanding positions were recognized in the business to business category, combined with the business to customers class, from regional to the national levels. I feel so happy. I thank God. I give God the glory. And I pray this new financial year, I'll be able to do more. We deserve this gift because they have invested in the business. They've partnered with us. You know, they've been there with us through thick and thin. They have been consistent, you know, with uh, their delivery. They've been consistent with their investments. We want them to be successful because if they're successful, we're successful. And um, we'll continue to work with them, um, you know, to build their businesses as we build our business. Flour Mills believes that 80% of its Nigerian market success depends on the customers and distributors, and the dissemination is to be sustained in decades to come. Dangote Flour Mills PLC, a leading manufacturer of flour in Nigeria, pulled through a period of deficit and recession to turn a profit in the past year. The flour-making giant announced the dividend of 20 koba per share for the year ended 2017 at its 12th annual general meeting here in Lagos. Scores of shareholders gather for the 12th annual general meeting of Dangote Flour Mills PLC. It's a cheerful atmosphere and shareholders appear upbeat. The reason is not far-fetched. It's the first time in about five years a dividend is being offered. The company's profit before tax stands
stands at over 19 billion naira compared to the 11.6 billion naira recorded in 2016. Profit after tax for the company is approximately 12.6 billion naira and for the group it edged over 15 billion naira. Shareholders are to receive a dividend of 20 kobo per ordinary share of 50 kobo each on or before June the 27th. The same effort we put in bringing the company out of a lost position is the same effort that we'll put into working hard to ensure that we make a lot more profit and we're able to pay you more dividends. From an accumulated loss of about 25 billion naira in the last two years, Dangote Flour Mills has worked its way up to profitability. One of the things that happened during the course of the last like 18 months is that um, we increased the quality of our products, uh, we improved our route to market, and we received substantial support from our parent company, Dangote Industries. Driving the market development through our, pro through our company and, in and increasing capacity, that's the strategy we followed. The strategy was very clear, growing in a stagnant and a declining market. Coming from a bad situation, extremely bad situation if we want to be sincere, to this situation it's only common sense that you say, oh, uh, you've done well. Dangote Flour Mills PLC, which produces wheat products, mills wheat and trades in yellow corn, was incorporated in Nigeria on January 1, 2006, and is listed on the Lagos floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Let's take a look at some more business news. Here's Anne Wilder. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Ijoma. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, says that anyone who does not comply with executive orders, especially on the ease of doing business, will be sanctioned. He said this at the meeting of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council at the State House in Abuja. This journey of um, uh, building an enabling business environment is perhaps even more a, math, a, a journey of national transformation. Because what we're talking about is changing attitudes that have long been entrenched. We're talking about changing mindsets. Because it's not just about putting in place a uh, system. It is more about changing the way people think. I mean, if people have for years thought that when I am uh, in a position uh, as a regulator, it means that I, this is also a position where I can bully people, I can make money for myself and all of that. If people have that impression and, and, have, um, and have had that impression for years, it will take a while. And those who they deal with also believe that yes, perhaps they have a right to actually do what they are doing. So it takes you know, a while to be able to change that. And part of it, of course, is ensuring that there's consequence for misbehavior. And this is one of the issues you know, that the uh, president himself has asked that we take a good look at. He believes very strongly that we must look at how uh, it is that those who do not comply with instructions, do not comply with orders, or are found to be uh, misbehaving in one way or the other should be sanctioned appropriately. So I think that a combination of this reorientation as well as sanctions uh, will, will greatly uh, help in changing our business environment, but more importantly in changing some of the bad habits that have been imbibed uh, over the years. Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Now let's take a look at a report by Nigeria's Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. It actually indicates that the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation lost a total of 547 billion naira in its operations between 2015 and 2017. The NNPC reported losses of 267.14 billion naira in the year 2015, 197.4 billion in 2016, and 82 billion naira in 2017. That report also shows that one of the subsidiaries of the NNPC, and that's the Nigerian Gas Processing and Transportation Company Limited, made a profit of 141.3 billion naira in the same period under review. Nigeria's stock market has started the week with a moderate rebound from last week's string of losses amidst bargain hunting and profit taking. Let's hear more from Chimezie Obiwago.
Thank you for joining us on Stock Market Report. The equities market seems to be gathering some momentum following last week's losses. Today, the index managed to enter the green zone by 0.34% thanks to Dangote Cement, which lifted the market with 2.22% gain. However, the gain by the cement giant did not have any impact on the industrial sector, which went down by 0.15%. All other sectors were also down, with oil and gas leading the losses, no thanks to Seplat. On the price movement chart, it's 21 stocks apiece on both sides of the price performance chart. The gradual recovery in the market is as a result of portfolio managers taking advantage of the lower prices to rebalance and enhance their portfolio for first half year ending. And traders say this trend is likely to continue for the rest of the week. And that was the Stock Market Report. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. But it definitely wasn't exciting for other global markets around the world. They kicked off the last trading week in the month of June on a sour note. Investors are bracing up for further tariffs on global trade by the Trump administration and the effect of Brexit. Let's check out the numbers for today. business news for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Umawadu. It's back to you, Juma. You first. First bank. Thanks a lot, Anne. Now to the southeastern region. The Anambra state government has directed that all buildings on drainage channels and floodplains causing obstruction to free flow of water should be demolished. The Commissioner for Environment, Mr. Michael Lukunkwa, mentioned this when he led some members of the Anambra State House of Assembly Committee on Environment to the sites. Men at work at the Quata Junction in Oka, the Anambra State capital, heating the ground to open up drainages that are said to have been blocked over the years. From Quarter Junction through Quarter Abattoir, Sami Spackle to Obinago area, massive excavation and desilting exercise is going on. The exercise started in Onicha and the state government appears resolved to tackle the problem of flooding and erosion in areas constantly threatened. The, the menace is being caused by the community, uh, people in the community themselves. There are, there, there's, there's a house down there that is blocking the, the water channel. So I'm urging on the government to not look back. The team from the State Ministry of Environment and the State Assembly move around on an assessment tour. We have been uh, sensitizing the Anambra not to build on, on waterways, uh, floodplains and drainage channels. This is an example of what we have been talking about, where a developer actually built and blocked a drainage channel that empties into a natural water flow. Of course, we are going to undo this. Um, His Excellency has said that anybody that built on drainage channels will be demolished. That's an executive order. This order is, however, expected to follow due process. First and foremost is to ascertain the authenticity of the building plans that uh, we are issued out here for all of these buildings, especially the ones that are on the waterways that have caused all this very uh, havoc. But by the time we have invited physical planning and uh, AGDA, Oka Capital Territory, the assurance I'm giving to Ndia Nambra will come with our finding within the shortest possible time, and I believe the right thing has to be done. For the Anambra State Commissioner for Environment, part of doing the right thing is for the people to avoid dumping refuse inside gutters and also improve on the habit of environmental cleanliness. Still ahead on the news at 10, 45-year-old Egyptian goalkeeper Esam El Hadari becomes oldest player to feature at the FIFA World Cup. That's on sports. Who joins us again?